Hey everyone, Sparks back with another Goddess Victory Nikkei video, and it is finally time for my highly anticipated unit tier list. And unlike the last one that was just a waifu tier list, just for fun, this one is more of an actual serious power level tier list. Now there's a couple of things that I want to address here before we actually jump into the tier list itself. Notice that I have more stratification than most tier lists. I think this allows for a little bit more nuance and uh, a little bit more of a realistic picture of where the units actually line up with each other. So just keep that in mind if you're comparing this to other tier lists that you see. Second, some of these unit placements might seem surprising at first, but when you look at how they are actually used and what you need things in like special arena or solo raid when you're making multiple teams, it makes sense. I'll focus on a unit's best case scenario. So if it's very strong in one game mode, usually that's all it needs to be. So it might be very high on the tier list, even if it's pretty bad in another type of game mode. Even more points will be given to a unit if it is very strong in multiple modes. Another thing I want you to keep in mind, tier lists are inherently reductive and it's impossible to make a perfect tier list. They're just fun and a good way to get a, you know, approximation of how useful or strong a unit may be. It's based off of all my own real world tests, as well as uh, consultations with other very high ranking players and video based evidence of squads that are proven. So all this is very real world, real tested, real results. Um, you know, what are the high level players? What are the ranking players actually doing? Um, some of the squads will be well known, others may not be. It's my tier list, but I want to hear from you too in the comments. So if you've had a very different experience or you would adjust something, please let me know. I'm sure I'm going to hear about it anyway. People, you know, always love to uh, have their own opinions heard and tier lists are generally contentious. So don't be afraid to sound off down there. Uh, I'll be going through the units roughly in the order they were released, and the units in the same tier will be roughly in order of power level from left to right. Okay, so let's jump into it. Our first unit here is Rappy, and Rappy is going to go down here in the E tier. Just how it is. <laughs> Starting off a little bit on a low note. I love her. She's the main uh, unit character. Main unit character? You know what I mean. Um, our next one is going to be Anise. And surprisingly, this is something that might uh, make people very surprised at first. She's going to go all the way up here into the A tier list. Uh, this is because she just has the best burst generation in the game. And she's extremely good in PvP. You're never going to see a very high level special arena squad without uh, her on one of those squads. However, she's purely a battery and terrible in basically every other game mode, so um, it keeps her from going into that super high tier list. All right, I'm going to try and keep this brief with every unit and not talk about each one in depth because we got a lot of units to go through. All right, our next one is Neon, and I think she's going to go... Um, just above Rappy here in the D tier list. She can actually be good for crit rate in some scenarios. Usually it's not really what you want to be doing, but she can assist in like some Snow White teams. Uh, our next one we have is Diesel, and she's going to go up here in the C tier list. She's a decent tank for PvP, uh, will oftentimes make your um, solo raid teams and can do uh, infinite ammo shenanigans with people like Guillotine. All right, then we have Brid. Brid is going to go down here in the D tier, but we will put her ahead of Neon. She can deal um, heavy damage and can be kind of like a poor man's uh, or unlucky person's uh, Scarlet or Snow White in some scenarios. Um, our next unit is Celine. Celine did get a buff, but honestly, she's still down here in the E tier. Um... Just not that great. We'll go ahead and put her above Rappy. Hello? There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Privity is next. Privity is a very useful unit. Um, was pretty good on launch and honestly, I think has just gotten um, even better. Uh, she's a excellent support for very fast reload teams. She's super good for Summer Nice, good for Scarlet. Um, she's one of the best burst threes in arena. She's just super, super good. We're going to put her up here in the A tier. And uh, we're going to put her ab 
above um, Anise. Um, Delta. Delta is going to go down here in the E tier. Probably won't get any uh, argument with that. Um, Micah is our next one. She's also going to go down here in the E tier. Again, these are roughly in power level of uh, left to right, but um, not exactly. And then um, Belorta, we'll go ahead and put her down here in the E tier as well. Um, okay, next one is Admi. We're back to our SSRs. Admi is an interesting one. I think, in a way, her usefulness has kind of fallen off recently because we just have like more ways of doing what Admi was actually good at, but she's still fairly useful. I'm going to put her in the C tier. Um, Dola is the next one. Dola was actually somewhat of a reroll target on launch, um, and I actually got double Dolas when I started my account. Um, I'm a big fan of her. She looks amazing in her dress. She's still super useful. She's going to make it onto basically every um, solo raid on one team or another, oftentimes on normal raids. Um, she's, she, her main thing is that she has cooldown reduction, and it's just any cooldown reduction is inherently very, very good. She also has a good attack bonus. We'll make it onto a lot of Snow White teams and just general use. And Dola is going to go down here into the C tier, but I think I'm going to put her up here at the top of the C tier for now. Okay, our next one is Drake. Drake was another super powerful unit on launch. However, I think her power level has significantly fallen off since launch. Uh, not that she's bad at all, but there's just like other units that kind of does what she does better in a lot of ways. Like Noir replaced her in a lot of situations. So I'm going to put her down here in the C tier. She's also pretty good in Arena, but she's kind of a filler unit in Arena. Um, you know, definitely not a bad unit, but um, has just gotten kind of like pushed down by a lot of other units, I think. Our next one, we're getting into our, uh, our R Nikkei's. Um, going down here in the F tier. Honestly, um, the F tier is just going to be all of our R rank Nikkei's. Um, 23 here gets a little shout out for being the original goddess of victory. Um, our next one is Idol Sun. She also gets a special shout out for being the only burst three support until Summer Anise came out. Then we got 08, EG with her night vision goggles, FA, OW kind of looks like a generic stick figure. Um, 12 looks like a bug. Flower, actually pretty good design on flower. And then uh, Ocean. And I think that's the last of our RNEKs. Okay, our next one is Senti. Senti was basically the best burst to for pushing campaign and in so many scenarios on launch. Um, she's gotten slightly worse, I would say, especially since the release of Blanc, but she still is just extremely good in both arena and pushing campaign and will oftentimes make a raid team, although not quite as useful as before, but she's gonna be our first S tier unit. Um, she's just super, super good. She has the best burst generation in the game. She can negate some big attacks with her shield, um, just very good for survivability and like all kinds of a variety of content. Okay, Arya is, is next. Arya is going to go in the D tier. Um, for a while, she actually had some pretty good utility paired with Falkwang as a shield team, um, but that team is getting less and less relevant, and um, she's, she's just kind of mid, a little below average here down here in the D tier. Okay, speaking of Falkwang, Falkwang is going to be next. And, um, I mean, Falk Wang, honestly, I could just put her right next to Arya, I suppose. In a way, she's a little better, but she does have a slower cooldown, whereas Arya could theoretically um, function on her own. So I'll put her just below Arya here. Um, our next one is Alice. Oh, Alice. All right, so Alice is insanely strong. Now, we did usually just recently have the um, announcement on macro use, which uh, has, you know, pushed her down a little bit from people that were cheating with her. Um, but Alice is just extremely strong, okay? Um, Alice is still one of the best, if not just the straight-up best DPS in the game, 
Um, you know, you can do extremely good damage with her if you practice clicking with her, even just leaving her on auto. <laughs> if you have her with maximum charge speed, she can be totally insane. And she's going to be our first god tier unit. Um, god tier is reserved for units that are just head and shoulders above everything else, is good in multiple game modes, and might actually be a mistake from the developers. Um, and Alice is just meets all those requirements, um, even playing with her legitimately. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what else I can say about Alice. You know, her pierce ability, I said that weird, her pierce ability makes her absolutely insane for doing multi-hits, taking out projectiles, core and body, you know, different parts. Um, she's good in arena, probably like top three or four best DPS in arena. Um, one of your best DPS for solo raids. Um, special interception. She's just insane. Um, absolutely bananas. Okay. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, we have Crow. Oh, Crow. Um, Crow is very despicable, but I love her design. Um, she's also a very odd, conflicted kit of being a defender, but kind of doing attack damage is just not really great at anything. And she goes all the way down here into the E tier. I'm not sure if her or Celine is better. I don't know. I think you might have more reason to try Celine sometimes. I'm going to put her just below Celine there. Okay. Emma is our next unit. Um, Emma is a little bit of a meme, but she's actually very good. For a while there, she was like top tier in arena, but I think she's fallen off a little bit. Still a usable unit, but I'm going to put her down here towards the bottom of C tier. Now we have Epinel. Epinel is kind of an obscure unit. You don't hear a lot about Epinel, honestly. Um, she's okay. I've heard people say that she's actually underrated, but I just haven't really seen evidence of using her. Let me know what you guys think about Epinel. I'm going to put her down here in the D tier, kind of towards the bottom for now. Then we have Ether. Ether is another E tier unit. I don't know. I'm going to put her there, maybe. <laughs> like I said, from left to right, it's not exact. All right. Uh, N102, or Anne, um, she's going to be down here in the D tier. She was actually a unit that was used a lot on launch, considered to be possibly the best burst one besides leader. But I think we've just gotten more and more useful burst ones. And she can still be used in a pinch if you need her to. Um, you know, D tier is certainly usable in some niche applications, but I'm going to put her uh, here, I think. Okay, uh, Mihara is next. Uh, Mihara is actually a surprisingly good burst 3 for being an SR. Um, that said, in reality, you're almost never going to be using Mihara. I'm just going to put her down here in the E tier, maybe just above Rappi. Okay, Yunhua is next. Yunhua is another unit that kind of very rarely gets used. Um, she is going to go down here in the D tier, and I don't know, maybe just put her here, something like that. All right, uh, Exia is next, another kind of obscure unit. Um, she's going to be another um, D tier unit, and I think we're going to put her next to Yunhua. And then we have Guillotine. Guillotine was always kind of like a mid-tier DPS, someone that was not bad in like the early game, could do a lot of damage, but was kind of hard to use, and has just gotten better and better and better as the game has gone on. Now, I would say she's like just below some of our really top-tier DPS, and I'm going to put her in the B tier. She's our first B tier unit. It might be at the top of B tier. I almost want to put her in A tier, but... You know, some of these other units are just a little, a little, a little better. Um, but Guillotine is probably still going to be one of your DPS on all of your your solo raid uh, teams. All right, next one is Freema. I love Freema's design. She's fun. She's a sleepy girl. But frankly, you're just never going to use her. So Freema is going to go down here. Maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe below Mihara, honestly. Okay. Next one is Haran. Haran is our first um, pilgrim. Haran is very strong. She was another top tier DPS on launch. Is still very good. I've actually been using her to push um, like campaign chapters of like uh, 22, 23, 24. But um, you know, even as strong as she is, she's very 
mid against a lot of bosses. And I think I can't put Haran higher than maybe... Mm, I don't know, does Haran deserve to go in A tier? Where do I have Haran? Let me check my notes. No, we're going to put her down here in B tier, below Guillotine. Yeah, I think Guillotine is just going to be a better DPS in most situations. Okay, our next one is Yan. Yan actually has some decent abilities, but... It just, I don't know, some of these units just really get outshined by a lot of units. And we're going to put her down here at the bottom of D tier. Then we have Sugar. Sugar is definitely by far the best Gravedigger unit in the game. And just generally pretty good in a lot of situations. Um, especially when you get her with Overload gear. Sugar's burst, Rapid Fire can be very good. Her range can become almost infinite with certain uh, perks or, or effects on her. And we're going to put Sugar in B tier, probably above Haran. Yeah, I think Sugar deserves to be there. Okay, next one is going to be, um, whatever this girl's name is, Julia. Julia, that's her name. Okay, so we're going to put her down here towards the bottom of, uh, of E tier. I mean, she's probably... She probably deserves to be up here, honestly. Um, actually, maybe even... She's probably more up here. This is probably more of a fair place for Julia. But yeah, still still in the E tier. Okay, Isabel is our next unit. Um, Isabel is another pilgrim, usually considered to be the worst pilgrim. She was part of the original Gravedigger team and can kind of do some shenanigans with Vesti that actually is pretty powerful, um, frankly. But I think she's still not better than just a C tier unit. Very niche applications. All right, our next one is Leader. Leader is insane. Leader was decidedly the best burst one above everyone else, no matter what, in almost every scenario before Dorothy came out. And I would argue that Leader is still better than Dorothy in most situations. In some situations, Dorothy can be better. Um, Leader's going to be a little bit more universal. Um, I think just... She has the cooldown reduction. She has the repairing cover. She has the huge attack bonus. She's just insane, and she is going to be our next god-tier unit, and we're going to put her just below Alice there. Okay, um, Ludmilla is next. Um, Ludmilla is a decent tank. She can do taunting. She can be okay in PvP. She can use part of one of the best uh, special interception train teams, so she does have, have um, some utility there, but she's still relatively low on the tier list. I'm going to put her towards the bottom of C tier here. Maiden is next. Um, Maiden looks fantastic, but honestly, you're just not going to use Maiden very often. Um, she is a decent PvP unit in some situations, but even then, so many shotgun users are better than her. And so I'm going to put her down, I don't know, maybe here. She's definitely in the D tier somewhere. Okay, Mary is next. Uh, Mary's 40 second burst cooldown just kills her um, because she's not good enough to um, justify doing two burst ones. She does have a heal ability, but she's still going to go down here in the E tier. We'll put her above some of these units. I don't know, she might... I mean, she's not very good, honestly, but I think she's still better um, because sometimes you just need a healer. So we're going to go ahead and put her um, above some of these other ones. Okay, next one is Maxwell. My unit that is ever elusive and evades me. Maxwell looks good. She is super powerful. Maxwell is an amazing DPS on her own and is also the best pairing and support although she's technically an attacker, for some of the other best and most broken attack units in the game, which puts her up here in the god tier. Like, she's just insane on her own, and it's just even more insane if she's with Alice or with Snow White. Um, the fact that she is the best with two of the other most broken attackers, plus is pretty good on her own, just easily puts her up here into the god tier. Okay, uh, Milk is next. Milk is uh, not doing a whole lot. Um, Milk is probably going to go down here in the D tier. I honestly don't have... Some of these weaker units are a little bit harder to rank just because 
I don't have experience with them and it's hard to find other data with other people having experience on them either, but she's gonna go down here into the D tier as well. All right, Miranda is next. Miranda is basically our best burst one support for Snow White and is just generally a pretty solid burst one. Um, she's gonna be, you know, kind of a mid tier unit, maybe would be down here um, in the C tier. But the fact that she is um, the best burst one for Snow White, I think bumps her up maybe a little bit higher than uh, otherwise we would think. So I'm gonna go ahead and put Miranda um, above Anise right here. Like I said, just the fact that she is the best burst one to go with Snow White um, really bumps her up there. Okay, Noah is next. Noah is extremely good. She can cheese certain boss mechanics. Um, she can negate Scar uh, Scarlet completely in special arena. She's good for some like taunting situations and Noah is gonna go to the very top of B tier. Um, then we have Signal. Signal is not very useful. She's a burst to attacker, um, which ends up kind of just inherently making her a little bit weaker. She's not like super useful in any situation. And she's going to go down here towards the bottom of E tier. But I mean, ahead of some of these units, uh, we, eh, yeah, probably about here, maybe actually above Julia, I guess more towards the top of E tier if we're being honest. Okay. Um, noise is next. Noise is super good. Um, she can do taunting shenanigans. You can use her to beat the train. She's still super good in arena, even after they fixed her bug. She's going to be good in a lot of raid teams. Um, she does have a slow cooldown, but she's still very tanky, has taunting, um, can heal as well. And so noise is going to go uh, kind of towards the top of... B tier, maybe C tier. Oh yes, I do have her in C tier. Okay, we're gonna put her at the very top of C tier for now. Okay, uh, Novel is next. Novel is still a top tier boss burst two. Um, I personally don't have my Novel built yet, but she's super good with a lot of units, including um, Alice and Snow White. And we're gonna put Novel up here towards the bottom of A tier, just above Anise. Then we have Pepper. Pepper hits hard. She's good at damage. She's good at healing. I would say one of the top three best healers in the game. She is a shotgun unit that can go in a variety of situations. Um, and Pepper is going to go right here into B tier. We got Scarlet. I'm going to try and pick up the pace here. Okay. Uh, Scarlet is very strong. Scarlet is going to go um, all the way up here into the S tier. Scarlet is just one of the best uh, burst threes in the game in almost any scenario. She's the best burst three for arena. She's good for bosses, pushing campaign, no matter what you're doing, um, she's going to go here to the uh, top of S tier. Okay, um, we have Yulha. Yulha has some strong abilities and some minor utility, but honestly, you're just kind of rarely going to use her. She's very niche. We have some other units that kind of do the same thing as her. And so I'm going to put her down here into D tier, maybe right here. Okay. Um, Polly. Polly is next. Um, Polly is often seen on the Snow White team. She can also be okay-ish in Arena. And Polly is going to go in the middle of our C tier. Probably, mm, does she go above Add Me or below Add Me? Maybe right above Add Me right here. Okay, Rupee, uh, one of the strongest just pure damage burst twos. Um, she's still very, very strong in a lot of situations. And Rupee is going to go into the A tier, I think right here, uh, maybe above Anise. Ooh, there we go. Okay, uh, Uni is next. Um, Uni can provide some heals in a pinch. Um, she can defend, you know, has a rocket launcher, which is just kind of inherently useful for like fast charging. But honestly, um, her skills are just not really that useful. And we're going to put Uni kind of towards the bottom of D tier, maybe something like this. Okay, Rapunzel. 
Loki, one of the best units in the game. Her, her heals are just insane. She can make you survive through so much. She's probably the most valuable unit for a pushing campaign. She's fantastic in arena. She's going to be on every single uh, raid or solo raid. She just trivializes some things, making you survive through anything. She is another god tier unit. Um, she's just amazing. Like She's one of only two units that can revive unit. And her heals are the strongest in the game. She's a pilgrim. She's just absolutely incredible and deserves to be up there in the god tier. Okay, Vesti is next. Uh, Vesti is one of these units that was kind of a sleeper unit, but has proven to be pretty strong. And she's going to go here into the B tier. And I think we're actually going to put her above Haran, just below Sugar here. Um, again, you can do kind of like uh, burst cycling shenanigans with... Um, Isabel, she's also just one of the strongest water DPSs in the game. You can fast charge with her, um, just generally good. You'll probably put her on several raid teams. Then we have Volume. Volume, I think, has fallen out of the spotlight a little bit. She was absolutely top tier when game launched, probably the second best burst one on launch. Um, she's fallen off a little bit, but still has the all-important burst cooldown, and has recently gotten a little bit of a power bump doing crit builds with people like Guillotine and Scarlet. You can pair her with Mask, things like that. Um, volume is still going to be on basically every um, raid that you do just because she is a burst one with cooldown reduction. And that's going to put volume um, just above uh, Diesel here. Okay, our next one is our girl, Snow White. Favorite unit in the game. Absolutely busted. One of the strongest units in the game. The only unit that can one-shot special interception bosses. She's fantastic in raids. Um, she's just... Incredible. Um, another one of these god tier units that might possibly be a mistake. And we're going to put her right here, I think just below Alice. Um, Alice might still edge her out in some situations, but um, Snow White is absolutely the goddess of victory. Okay. Uh, Helm is next. Helm is our first banner unit. So we finally got through all of our launch units. Um, Helm is one of those units that I think had a lot of help uh, hype when she came out. And then I think kind of fell off. But then the longer the game has gone on, the more we realize Helm is still actually super, super useful. Um, she's just incredible. Like her heals are so good. She's great to pair with Modernia if you're fighting a boss and you don't want to burst with her. Um, she's just going to be in like basically any raid that you're doing. And we're going to put her um, just below Privity. All right, Laplace is next. Uh, Laplace was extremely good. Maybe like top three for sure, top five DPS when she came out. But I think just as time has gone on, Laplace has just gotten less and less needed and there's more and more units that you can use in place of Laplace. If you've already built Laplace, she's still totally usable. But, um, you know, I think she's just become more and more of kind of a mid-tier unit. And I'm going to put Laplace kind of in the middle of C-tier. Um... Yeah, below add me and Emma right here. Maybe above Emma, actually. Yeah, we'll put Laplace right there. Okay. Um, we have our first limited unit. This is Neva. She's another SR unit. Surprisingly strong. She has Pierce. Could do a ton of damage. I remember people using her against Gravedigger back in the day. But honestly, there's just so many replacements for her at this point. Um, you know, the... You're just like, when are you actually going to use Neva? That said, she does still hit surprisingly hard. I think is going to go up here into the D tier. And um, might be more useful than some of these units, actually. Um, we'll go ahead and put her here. Maybe she should be at the bottom of D tier, but I'm, I'm going to stick her there. She looks fantastic. All right, uh, we have Winter Shopper Ruby. Winter Shopper Ruby has turned out to be, unfortunately very disappointing. I have seen people still try and use her in arena. She did get an upgrade um, after they like reduced the the delay between the burst, but she's honestly still just a very low tier unit. She's going to go down here towards the bottom of D tier. Um, I guess we'll put her above Neva right here. Okay. Um, then we have our other winter unit, 
Miracle Fairy Anne, dramatically better. I think there's a lot of people sleeped on her, and a lot of people just skipped her entirely and don't even have her. She is the best burst two to pair with Snow White, is also the only other unit besides Rapunzel that can revive people. She's amazing in Arena. She's just a very, very strong unit. I think before Summer Knees, she was our strongest limited unit we ever got. And we're going to put her very high up here into the A tier, probably just above Rupee. All right, our next one is Modernia. Modernia is extremely strong. Another just fantastic generic DPS unit. Maybe the best DPS for pushing campaign. Um, her only real weakness is Arena, where she's kind of not that great, um, but she is just extremely, extremely good. Um, you can build her so she basically never has to reload. She does insane damage if you give her hit rate all the time. And we're going to put her, I think, just below Scarlet, but she is definitely an S-tier unit and extremely good uh, definitely a reroll target for a lot of people. Okay, Jackal is next. Jackal is a bit of a one-trick pony in that you'll basically only see her in Arena. That said, she is a absolutely top-tier unit for Arena. She has the best burst generation in the game with Anise and actually has, you know, a little bit of, um, you know, utility as opposed to Anise. And we're going to put her uh, here at the bottom of S-tier. Okay, Viper is next. She was, <laughs> my voice cracked there a little bit. Uh, Viper is actually a top tier burst to DPS and is extremely good against some bosses, but I think just that space is very crowded. Um, and Viper realistically is gonna go down here into the C tier, I think kind of towards the bottom, maybe still above Isabel. Okay, Sin is next, our first liberation unit. I have seen people use her in Arena. If you put a lot of investment in her, she can actually be pretty decent, but um, pretty niche. And I'm going to put her down here just above Winter Shopper Rupee here in the D tier. All right, Guilty, on the other hand, is extremely strong. Um, some would argue the best burst, too, in the game. I don't think she's actually quite as good as some people say, but she's still a very, very strong unit. And we're going to put her up here in the A tier. And I think just below Miranda. Okay, Quincy is next. Uh, Quincy is one of those units that was kind of like okay in everything and not bad in anything, but recently got a big bump because she is an extremely strong unit to pair with Summer Anise. And that is going to put her kind of into the middle of C tier. I think just above Polly right here. Um, she provides some heals. She provides attack. She provides crit. Um, just a, a pretty overall strong unit and one of the best units to pair with one of the other best units in the game. All right, Himeno is next. Our first Chainsaw Man collab. Um, actually, some decent skills, but she is only an SR unit. And it kind of, you know, just inherently pushes her down there. And we're going to put her probably at the bottom of D tier. All right, so we're going to put Himeno right here, um, just above Rappi here. Actually, maybe deserves to be, you know, frankly, she might have more utility and go up here, kind of more in, towards the top of E tier. Okay, uh, Makima is next. Makima can be decent in Arena and is just kind of a damage soak for some boss fights. Um, that said, she's very niche. Um, she does have the invincibility, but um, is going to go down here towards the bottom of C tier, I think, just above Emma. Okay, moving along. We're over halfway through here. We're getting through it, guys. All right, power is next. Um, power is a very underrated unit. She's extremely good in in basically every situation that Laplace is good at. And I would put her just above Laplace. She does need very specific guild. She needs the quick reload cube or some help to keep her stacks. Um, just a strong generic DPS. She can actually snipe some people in Arena if you need to like take out a Scarlet or an Alice. And uh, we're going to put her in the middle of C tier right next to Laplace. All right, Coco is next. Um, Coco has some interesting abilities, but unfortunately is just kind of like good at stuff that we just don't have a need for yet. And so I'm going to put Coco here at the top of E tier. All right, 
We got our fellow maid here, our big booba maid, Soda. Soda is a little bit better, I would say. Um, she's gonna be kind of towards the bottom of D tier here. Um, she does have some niche applications. She can stun, she can heal a little bit. Um, but honestly, there's just a lot of better uh, burst ones. So I'm gonna put Soda, you know, she might deserve to be above some of these other units though, actually. We could put Soda, maybe uh, I'll put Soda here, kind of more in the, the middle of D tier. Okay, um, Nihilister is next. Nihilister is a criminally underrated unit. Now Nihilister is kind of inherently um, held back by the fact that she's a burst two attacker. I talked about this in depth in my Nihilister review. You can check that out. Um, but Nihilister is still extremely strong and probably the best pure DPS burst two. She scales well on investment. She has pierce. Um, she's good at bosses in particular areas where you can hit multiple enemies. She can also be pretty good at pushing campaign. And Nihilister might be a little bit controversial, but I'm going to put her up here in the A tier um, just above Novel. Okay. I think um, if you if you build Nihilster, you'll you'll find out. Okay, Sakura is next. Um, Sakura can be used to fight the train in combination with Ludmilla. Um, she also has cooldown reduction, which kind of inherently bumps up her usefulness, and you know that's just going to put her up there higher than you might otherwise think. That said, she is now the sixth unit with cooldown reduction, so she's not as essential for raids, and so I'm going to put her down here in the D tier, just below Brid. Okay, Biscuit is next. Biscuit goes right up here into the top of C tier. Biscuit is very good in Arena. She also is now extremely good with Summer Anise. Um, she pairs well with, um, you know, making a defender invincible in Arena. Um, she, you know, previously the support ability kind of wasn't really being put to use, but now the fact that Summer Anise is a support makes her very, very good. And uh, yeah, she's good for burst generation, and she's definitely a top of a C tier unit. Very, very usable in raids and arena in multiple situations. Okay, D is next. D is a unique unit. She can give you instant burst. Um, she's kind of the easy way to get past um, Modernia in Special Interception, if you haven't done that before. And we're going to put D... I think just below Sakura, right about here in the D tier. Okay, now we have Dorothy, one of the strongest units in the game. Some people I think would be tempted to put her right up here. I don't think that's realistic, honestly. I think even though she can be better than leader and is extremely high damage, does more damage than a lot of attackers, I think she's down here in the S tier. I mean, down here in the S tier. I mean, that's still insane, right? So she is going to be here in very rarefied air, maybe at the top. I think, yeah, I'm going to put her because in some situations, she's actually going to be better than leader. She has cooldown reduction. She does insane damage. She can good against bosses as well as mobs, particularly good against bosses with mobs and multiple parts. And uh, I'm actually going to put her right above Scarlet. Okay. Ray. Ray is next. Um, does anybody even know what Ray does? <laughs> um, I'm going to put Ray um, here, I think, just below um, Uni. You know, she is a defender. Um, she can be used in niche situations. I think she's got a 20 second cooldown. Um, she's what pushed a lot of people over the 160 wall. But, um, you know, honestly, I don't know if I can justify putting her that high. Maybe, maybe here. I don't know. Um, let me know if you have more experience with Ray and if I should actually be bumping her up into A tier or something. You never know. Okay, speaking of strong units, or not speaking of strong units, I don't know what I'm saying, guys. The video is getting long. We're probably like over an hour at this point. I don't know what the, the timestamp says. Okay, we're going to Blanc. The Bunny Girls. The Bunny Girls are insanely strong. Unfortunately, I just did not have the resources for her, and I only pulled for her sister, Noir. Um, but Blanc is one of the best tanks in the game. Just makes you super survivable. She's good in arena. She's good against bosses. She's amazing. And Blanc is going to go up here into the S tier, just above Senti. The only thing is, she's terrible by herself because she has a 60 second cooldown. That said, she can still be put into a team by herself in arena if you need to. Okay, then we have our sister, Noir. Noir is extremely good. 
Noir is pretty good DPS on her own. She can do reload ammo shenanigans in some comps. She gives a constant attack boost as long as you keep her health up. I think she replaced Drake in a lot of situations and is just one of the most useful units in the game. We're going to put her just above Blanc in the S tier because she can actually function without her sister, but is just even better with her sister. But she just edges her out uh, because she is a little bit better on her own. All right. Rosanna is next. Uh, Rosanna, probably one of our more disappointing units. We thought that maybe she could be a top tier um, arena unit. Unfortunately, it just didn't pan out. Um, I'm going to put her down here in the D tier. She could potentially maybe get better in the future. So I'm gonna, not going to put her quite at the bottom, but she's going to go down here. Okay, our first summer unit, Bay Goddess Mary. Bay Goddess Mary is kind of niche, but also not that niche because she is one of the few strong healers. She might be top three or four healer in the game. She does extra bonuses for water units. Um, I think, well, let's see, where do I have Bay Goddess Mary? Um, Bay Goddess is going to go right next to Diesel here. A solid unit, probably going to be on most of your arena teams, um, but still a little bit niche. And uh, yeah. Okay, our next one is Neon. Now, Neon, Summer Neon, ugh, Water Power Neon, whatever her name is, was one of the most disappointing units in the game. She's actually okay, and in some situations, she may make it on to certain boss teams or raid teams, but it's just very disappointing, and she's probably going to go in the D tier. Okay, on the other hand, we have Nero. Nero has a fantastic design and I think was big hype. She was on my list of top five most anticipated Nikkei's before she came out. And I think Nero is recognized as a strong unit, but is still underrated by a lot of people. Some of you might be surprised with how high I put Nero, but Nero is going to go right here in the B tier and is the best straight up tank in the game. Okay, now the big caveat here is she needs to be paired with Rapunzel to reliably get her buff stacks, but she can be straight up invincible. Like I did the challenge mode on the uh, last solo raid before the train, and I could straight up just ignore the lasers. Zero attacks. I never had to take cover when using Nero. That's how strong of a tank she is. I also can use her here. I just used her in the solo raid with Train. Again, could completely ignore the missiles, the turrets, whatever. Didn't matter. All right, Mast is next. One of our newest units and is actually a pretty good unit. She has good utility. She is great on um, crit-based teams. She's probably best paired with Guillotine. Also good with Scarlet. And just, you know, kind of a, a decent unit. Um, that you might put on some of your raid teams. And I put her, let's see, I think towards the bottom of C tier. Um, yeah, we're going to put her right here just below Laplace. All right, Anchor, our newest free unit, another SR. Um, I was hoping or maybe thinking that she could have fantastic burst generation. Unfortunately, she just has kind of the standard burst generation of a rocket launcher. Honestly, there's just kind of no reason to be using her. And so we're going to put her towards the bottom of E tier right here. All right, Summer Anise, a huge breakout unit, by far the strongest uh, limited unit that we've gotten. One of the best burst threes, one of the best limited units, probably the best limited units, one of the best DPS in the game. In some situations, she can actually out DPS Scarlet. Although I don't think in general she's actually uh, better than Scarlet. But she is just extremely strong. And we are going to put her actually just above Noir. Just because she is so incredibly powerful. Um, you can reduce her magazine to zero if you have her burst at least level nine. Um, I talked about this in detail in my full unit review. You can go check that out um, to see what some of the best squads are her. Uh, are to use with her. She's good at a crit team. Um, her range almost doesn't matter with her skill that just deals final attack damage to anything that she hits. Um, she's, she's super, super strong um, and really shine in the last solo raid with um, the train. But um, she's also even very good in arena. I would say maybe the fourth best uh, burst three attacker in arena and is 
Just insane. Um, she's extremely good paired with Privity or Scarlet or Mast or Quincy. Um, really good. You can do quick reload teams with like Dorothy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I could keep talking about her, but I won't. Okay, we are finally to our last unit, and it is Aquamarine Helm. Aquamarine Helm is a little bit niche. Some people were a little disappointed in her. She's definitely best paired on an iron team. I've been using her to fight the Challenge Gravedigger, um, and she's been very good there. She has cooldown reduction, which inherently bumps her up, and she's going to be almost the same as Dola, but... In most situations, you know, Dola is just a little bit more universal. Dola is also, you know, I think just slightly better with some of her abilities. But we're going to put her right here next to Dola. A very strong, worldly unit right in the middle of a C tier. All right. That brings us to the end of the tier list. I know this was a long one. You are a legend if you stayed with it. Hopefully you found this interesting. Um, I'd really be curious to know what you guys think and where you might rank some of these other units. I'm sure some of you guys were already typing. You're like, ah, oh, I can't believe you put Makiba here or whatever. Um, but I'm here for it. I want to hear it. Um, yeah. So let me know. I stream every Monday and Wednesday on Twitch and YouTube. So I'll catch you guys in the next stream or in the next video. Check out some of my unit reviews that I linked in the description below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.